covering the low country. This is News 2's Beyond the Headlines. Moving forward, 526, a decision is made. Charlton County Council says they will keep the project, control of it, and finish I-526. We're also going to discuss later on here today, Senator Jim DeMint leaving the U.S. Senate, and now the decision could be coming very soon. That potential list uh, for Governor Nikki Haley reportedly down to five people. We welcome to the set uh, our distinguished list of guests, Brian Hicks from the Post and Courier, Kelly Golden from News Radio 94.3, and from Charleston County Council, Colleen Condon and Elliot Summy. Welcome to you all. I want to start with uh, our council members first. Last night, uh, actually Thursday night, pretty intense meeting, uh, but the decision kind of out of left field. A lot of people thought this, there was going to be a discussion to um, possibly give control of the city of Charleston to Mayor Joe Riley, but that wasn't even discussed. Absolutely not. There, there were very, I think Elliot was the only one actually ever willing to give it to the city of Charleston. And Is I don't think true? the mayor ever actually even wanted the project. Well, I think, um, I think the mayor wanted it if we weren't going to do the right thing. And, and ultimately last night a compromise was had. Um, and he compromised. Originally, the original alternative G was something he wanted with the stoplights and the 35 miles an hour. Yeah, but none of y'all wanted it. No, Everybody and, voted and, against and alternative we, and G. And we didn't. And we compromised and he compromised. We compromised and said, hey, we're going to go forward with the EIS and with the, the pathway of alternative G. And he said, okay, well, I'm going to support taking the stoplights out and getting the road up to 45 miles an hour. And, and ultimately, him throwing down the gauntlet and saying, hey, guys, if y'all not going to do the right thing for the region, I am, I think, helped move folks um, more towards the center. And, and that's what happened. Uh, you know, ultimately, you have one, people on the left and people on the right in a situation, and, and there was a move to the center last night. And I think, uh, hopefully, uh, now that council has spoken and we're going in a direction that we all can start pulling that wagon in the same direction together. Uh, Colleen, do you see it going in the same direction? Certainly, uh, the motion that was made last night put in so many things. It was a kitchen sink motion to make sure they don't have to come back to council, but for very few things. So the moving forward is he got five votes once. He doesn't know if he can keep the five votes. So we wrote in the kitchen sinks last night. Well, so I think we're technically I got five votes twice. It just happened the same night. But Wait, but, the, but the bottom. Does that scare but the bottom anybody line. here? Look at this. Mary Jo gets what Mary Jo wants. Why not give it to the city? You guys have been fighting over this a long time. I'm not sure that there's a, a lot of confidence out there. You're going to get this done. Well, I, I'm confident we're going to get it done. I mean, we have various reasons to get it done. Dickie Swears talked about good faith last night with the community. I mean, we also had to have good faith with our partners in this situation, which we have two of them: the SCDOT and the State Infrastructure Bank. Um, we can argue back and forth about whether the infrastructure bank was going to find us in default or not if we didn't build this road, even though they already did it once. But, but the bottom well, line But finding is, you in default, did that automatically mean you were going to have to cough up almost $12 million? No. Yes. It never meant it. Yes, it did. <laughs> what would happen by <laughs> Absolutely statute, convinced on our positions on this. Well, I, I, and Colleen's a lawyer, so she knows better than me. But the state law says that the, they would automatically take um, and freeze our aid to subdivision, which the state treasurer in a letter to the infrastructure bank and in person to Mr. Swears and myself and, and Chairman Pryor said in an infrastructure bank meeting that he was prepared on Monday morning back <clears throat> in May of 2011 to intercept our aid to subdivision. And then we'd go to court and fight and try to get it back. Maybe we could have gotten back. Maybe we couldn't have. But <clears throat> as, a, as a summy who's watched another summy fight the state of South Carolina for years and years and years, it really doesn't work well to take them to court. A million dollars later, uh, my father has gotten a decent settlement out of them, but he still got rail through the north. So, it, 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 you know, at some point, you have to do what's right for all the constituents in Charleston County and all the taxpayers, and we each have our own individual districts to look out for, but ultimately, uh, we have a fiduciary responsibility. A minute left in this part the of the current, segment, go ahead. The current SIB had the right to make a decision. I don't believe the four, for that four out of five would have made the decision to allow us to do anything else. That I think they would have found us in default. But that all changes January 1st, which is really why the pressure has been on the last six weeks is Bobby Harrell didn't want to take the chance that we could get a better or different answer from a new SIB come January 1. All right, Colleen Condon, Elliot Summy here. Uh, we're going to continue this discussion. Brian Hicks and Kelly Golden here as well as we continue to debate the debate. So far, it looks like, well, the latest decision is is going forward. How far will that get? We'll continue the discussion when we return. You're watching Beyond the Headlines on News 2.
We go beyond the headlines as we continue our discussion on 526. It's been in the headlines for many a year now, and it seems like we're getting closer to some sort of a resolution. Brian Hicks, columnist with Post and Courier, Kelly Golden from News Radio 943, Colleen Condon, and Elliot Summy from Charleston County Council are here. Brian, I know you've wrote about this extensively. Were you surprised at all last night? Uh, a little bit. I, um, I knew it was going to be close. I figured it'd be five to four. Uh, the problem was I didn't know who those five would be. They had three swing votes, and um, probably I would not have hit my trifecta with Sass and Johnson. Uh, How did you get Anna Johnson in your camp? Um, I didn't lobby her, I'm going to be honest with you. Um, and within the last week or two of this, I quit lobbying everybody. I just started working on what I thought was the right thing to do. Uh, Anna made a decision with the facts that she had put in front of her. Um, and what she thought was the best thing for all of Charleston County, just like Colleen made a decision which she thought was the right thing for Charleston County, which was the opposite. And, and that's what happens in, in democratic forms of government. You have nine people and you have nine different opinions. And, and that's what's healthy about the process. But Anna came to that decision on her own. She talked to her people. Not on her own. Well, she's not for me. Well, what and, does that mean, not on her own? Are you suggesting well, she took money or? No, I'm not in any way suggesting she took money, but there was no, no one made a decision on their own. And, and, and respecting making their own decision is different, but they didn't make it on their own because we got an average this week of 500 emails a day. Mm -hmm. And of course, yeah, keep in mind, the two of us have been decided for months. For He's the dead. folks who have been undecided, I can tell you, Herb Sass's office is down the street from mine. He got hundreds of visits and letters and, and at requests for meetings that would be supposedly be one representative for the chamber and all of a sudden would be, you know, 10 people in the room putting pressure on them of, do you want to ever be elected again? Well, speaking of the pressure, I mean, did Anna not run and she's now got to face her constituents making she, this she decision? She committed that she was against Alternative G, and this is still specifically known as Alternative G. Well, in didn't, she, um, didn't she run against some of the next 526 people? Wasn't her opponent Thomas Legree? Her well, opponent was Thomas Legree. So those people probably weren't for her anyway, you think? Um, no, she actually was financially supported by the Welch family who, who runs Nick's 526 really? because she committed to them in writing multiple times and with the press multiple times that she was against Alternative G. Well, in fairness, we put it out to Anna Johnson uh, late this morning, uh, unknowingly that she was going to be the, one of the swing votes in this. Uh, she did not have a chance to get back to us to, to appear here today. So let's get off of, uh, of, of that topic and on to this Alternative G, which Ms. Connie, you say is not really Alternative G. I mean, it's, it, they're what gonna, is it? it's going to be keep calling G so that it doesn't have to go through the full vetting again. The public's not going to have the opportunity to even vet this new project, which Joe Riley has said until two weeks ago, he was adamantly against 45 miles an hour. He's adamantly against anything that resembled an expressway. And now he's gone back on his word in John's Islanders. Well, is that an expressway, forward. though, at 45 miles an hour? It's a, com it's a compromise between 35 and 55. Would 17 well, be considered that what we an need? expressway? Compromise? I've never seen an, uh, an interstate that was 45 miles an hour. Uh, you know, it's more like Johnny Dodd's Boulevard without the stoplights instead of Coleman Boulevard, which was what it was supposed to be look, to look like. Probably should repeat that but without it, the stoplights. Without the stoplights. No but stop it's lights. also a, a, a change. And would you consider it a major change from, from the original alter alternative G? No, because the, when it, the only changes are at the, uh, the intersections. We're going above grade instead of at grade, which also reduces the potential for development at those intersections. As a real estate developer, I can tell you the most valuable property is the ones that are at stoplights, is at, at corners. And we're getting rid of those stoplights. And, and one of the things this also does last night was, was get the Greenbelt Board and our staff to pursue conservation easements along the pathway of, of 526 in the um in john's island we've got 12 million dollars now that fairlawn's gone away we can go aggressively get those if those folks in john's island are really passionate about not seeing it develop then they need to buy sell conservation easements to the county and protect that land in perpetuity but Where's to colleen's your point but motion? to colleen's point if there is like a was, change sorry, it was in anna's to amendment. colleen's point if there's a change in a plan should it not go again to the full council and be voted on. See, this is where we're opening up a can of worms because you gave Anna her amendments and you're suggesting we now need to get more input. We've had the most input ever on this road, have we not? In any other road in the entire and history of South Carolina? And input is against it. 
But would it be? But why would you be against say they're for it? But wait, why would you be against higher a higher speed and getting rid of stoplight? Who's against and that? And in the federal no EIS one. process, the, uh, they're going to have to go back. To didn't the, the overpasses help get some of the support for this? Absolutely. You, you wouldn't have gotten this. Vote Absolutely. If you hadn't put and, an and the bottom line the is. The only thing that was done with the, with the EIS is a draft EIS. To get a federal EIS finished, you still have to go back to the public. You still have to take written comments from the public, and, and, and you have to digest those. It's the feds that are going to be doing it. The SEDOT is going to be managing the EIS process, but you're going to have the Army Corps of Engineers, the EPA, Federal Fish and Wildlife, and those folks aren't going to get swayed by, and the Justice Department, they're not going to get swayed by the smoking room politicians as we keep getting called so so the fair process is still going to be there because the feds are going to be doing it and to be honest with you there's going to be lawsuits that come out of the conservation league i mean they're trying to keep us from building a park on folly beach god knows what they're going to do with all with with the rest of the bar clark so you know this is going to be a two-year probably vetting process of these changes okay and the well, money's not even available for five years so people are expecting shovels to be turned this year are sorely mistaken well there's 99 million dollars that we've already drawn down and we drew down in 2007 um what's and as the earliest that we're going to see machinery and dirt th being three moved? years from now well and how much of how many money is going to be spent on attorney fees to fight lawsuits? luckily the 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 grant we got from the infrastructure bank allows for us to to use that money for attorney's fees as well so it's not going to cost the taxpayers of charleston county anything so so we have to chuck the red lots to pay the attorneys i suppose yeah. and i and i will say if this road's going to go forward i prefer it with the overpasses as opposed to having great intersections meaning level street intersections at up on the hill road and riley road i just heard if, compromise well, well here's, here's one if more it's going to happen I don't, i'm never going to support it but if it's going to happen do we absolutely need to help those homes that are within a thousand feet of of what might happen definitely now we don't know what the price tag is brad maybe that's another 100 or 200 million dollars and well, that, that brings my question. From? That brings up the, and we don't have a lot of time to hit this, unfortunately. But the one thing that the, the DOT and not wanting to take on the sponsorship role of this mentioned was overruns. Mm -hmm. Where does the overrun money come from? Because if there's you know, an over, if, everybody knows there's there's a possibility. If of there's an overrun, it will come from Charleston County. However, there is a forty percent contingency placed in this plan, on not only on design and construction, but on right of way acquisition. That $558 million is way too much money to build the plan that was proposed last night. The plan that was pr proposed last night can be built for $450 million. We vetted it with three different engineering firms independently. Private business and private engineering firms always build things cheaper than, than the public sector. We found that out on Johnny Dodd's Boulevard with Banks United. Colleen, you agree with that? You know, I'm not an engineer, but certainly I haven't seen many projects coming under budget except for the fact of Johnny Dodds because of the fact... The Cooper River Bridge. Because of the fact that the costs have been lower recently since there's not much construction going Bobby on. Bobby so Clare built the Cooper are taking, River Bridge taking under deals time less. and under budget. All right, we're going to take a break, come back and talk more Beyond the Headlines on News 2. Stay with us. Welcome back beyond the headlines. Brad Franco alongside Brian Hicks, Kelly Golden from News Radio 943. Of course, Brian from the Post and Courier columnist who has covered 526 extensively. I'm sure he's disappointed that we have reached what appears to be an endpoint of you sorts. You live near the future of 526. Uh, Colleen Condon and Elliot Summy are here too from uh, Charleston County Council. Somehow I don't think this is going to be the last we'll hear about 526. No. It will, it will be providing fodder for me for uh, years to come, <laughs> I'm sure. Hands raised on that one too. <laughs> Uh, Elliot, final words on the, the situation. Look, I, I think there are good people on both sides of this issue. Whether you are a citizen who lives on Savannah Highway, who's in traffic, or you're someone who lives near or in the path of the proposed alternative on Johns Island or James Island, both equally are good, are good folks. Um, unfortunately, uh, last night we, we were between the devil and the deep blue sea. Uh, between the contract we had with, this, uh, with the State Infrastructure Bank and the need for traffic relief. And what I think County Council as a whole did last night was play Solomon and figured out a best compromise and the best solution we, can, we could for those folks. Colleen? I just wish this, this project were even pr analyzed to provide as much relief as been promised to the people. And unfortunately, I think a lot of people are going to be sorely disappointed the day this opens and realize but even with it, the engineers of DOT, not the Conservation League, the engineers of DOT 
still say Savannah Highway is going to be severely congested and the North Bridge and St. Andrews and Glen McConnell. This isn't what people believe that they've just bought. Kelly. I hope you're wrong. I mean, I pray you're wrong. I want 526 finished. Alt G is not my favorite plan, but you know what? You increase the uh, speed limit to 45 and you took the lights out, out of the way, out of the equation, and that makes it even better for me. Brian? Um, I hope they can do something that um, Elliot's talking about here with the conservation easements. I'll, I think the road will be a pressure valve release. I just hope that it doesn't turn Johns Island into Mount Pleasant. Brian Hicks, columnist with Post and Courier, Kelly Golden from News Radio 94.3. Thank you for joining us once again, and thank you for joining us for another edition of Beyond the Headlines. Join us again next week when we go in depth on the stories making news in the Low Country. Have a great one.